Good afternoon and praise the Lord. We are so glad that so many of you have joined together with us to listen to what God has to say to us this afternoon. As many of you know, Mom Focus is a humble initiative to help encourage and build up young mothers in their journey of motherhood. Many of you have been part of all the last, all the uh, previous sessions of Mom Focus, and we thank God for that. And the Lord has graciously blessed us over the past one year. We have been dealing with various topics like uh, motherhood and parenting and being the suitable helpmeet and so on. And uh, we truly hope and pray that today's session also will be a blessing to each one of you. Uh, today's session is a very important one. And uh, dear speaker, Mrs. Sheena George Koshi will be sharing with us on the topic relationship with extended family. Let's prayerfully sit in the presence of the Lord and await uh, this for this session. To begin with, we have Sister Sheila Thomas and her children, Jonathan and Joanne from Ernakulam. They will help us with a song and Sister Sheila will first lead us in prayer. This is a special song written and composed by Sister Sheila Thomas. So now we will have the prayer by Sister Sheila and followed by the song. Over to you. Shall we bow our heads and look unto the Lord in prayer? Righteous, holy, gracious God, our Father, as we gather together, we praise your name and we praise for the purpose for which you have brought us together. We humble ourselves, forgive us, Lord, of our shortcomings as we listen to your word, learn and live according to it. We praise your name and we glorify your name. We submit to all the sisters who are present now and Lord, even in future, those who would be listening to this message, help all of us and help us to be blessed, to glorify your name, submitting this meeting into thy mighty hand, Lord. Have mercy on us. Talk to us very personally. We submit Shenan Auntie into Sheena Auntie into thy mighty hand. Talk through her, Lord. Use her mightily. You know the need of each of us. Help us, Lord to change from our wrong ways and live more into your likeness, growing in you and have a healthy relationship with our near and dear ones and the extended families. Submit the internet connections, let there be no glitches further. Help us all to listen to your word with no disturbance. Praying for all the sisters who are host and co-host Help them to perform their task neatly without any problems. Submitting once again, everybody. Open our hearts of understanding, Lord. Unless you are merciful and kind to us and you open the understanding of our hearts, we wouldn't be even able to grasp what you are talking to us. Have mercy, Lord. We need you. We need your words today. We want to live a holy life in this sinful world. We want to live a heavenly kingdom life on this fallen world. Help us and have mercy on us. We give all glory to you and ask a small prayer in and through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Shiva, could you please share the screen? Every moment of my life on this earth of hearts and fire takes me closer to the time when I shall be by Jesus' side. Every moment of my life on this earth of past and fire takes me closer to the time when I shall be by Jesus' side. 
The pain and sorrow breaks my heart. I will sing the song I love. Oh, the glory so big Christ strengthens me through cloudy times. The pain and sorrow breaks my heart. I will sing the song I love. Oh, the glory so big Christ strengthens me through cloudy times. Every moment of my life on this earth I sit by takes me closer to the time when I shall be by Jesus' side. Every moment of my life on this earth I sit by takes me closer to the time when I shall be by Jesus' side. Time for the morning star to shine to do your will for your Christ bride. When we for your service time, then we'll be master as you like. Time for the morning star to shine, to do your will on earth by strife. When we for your service time, then we'll be master as you like. Every moment of my life, on this earth that passes by, takes me closer to the time. When I shall be by Jesus' side, every moment of my life on this earth that passes by takes me closer to the time when I shall be by Jesus' side. Thank you so much, Sister Sheila, Thomas, Joanne, and Jonathan, for the beautiful song. Oh, the glorious hope in Christ strengthens me through cloudy times. That's a wonderful reminder. Now we have the most important part of today's session. We have Sister Sheena George Koshi with us to help us understand about the relationship with extended family. Uh, as we all know, we all desire to have a wonderful relationship with all friends and family. Romans 12 verse 18 says, if it is possible, as much as you can, live peaceably with all men. So as we lead our lives on this earth, let's have this prayer in our hearts. Lord, I want to have a godly relationship, a lovely relationship with all our dear ones. Sister Sheena George Koshi was the first speaker the speaker for our first mom focus session back in last October. She needs no introduction. She's a mom to two lovely children and a grandmother to a baby girl. Mr. George Koshi and Sister Sheena George Koshi, as a family, they are from Mylapra and they are involved in various ministries among families and young people. She is a teacher by profession and an expert with kids and uh, the Lord has been using them mightily in various ways for his glory. So today we are really, really happy to have Sister Sheena with us. Now over to you for the talk. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Sharon, for those wonderful words. It's a joy to be back with you all today in Mom's Focus. Looking back, we can only praise our creator and savior for leading us this far. I just want to tell you that God has placed each one of us in the particular place you are because he has, he has chosen you for a specific purpose there. We are intended to build, to share, to provide, and to be compassionate. The place to begin building any relationship is inside ourselves, inside our circle of influence, our own character. You know, human beings are all um, social beings. We need friends. We need people around us. We need, uh, you know, relationship in which we can uh, throw out our emotions. And like whether it be joy or sorrow, somebody whom we can trust and we can really pour out all our emotions. These relationships either help us grow to the limit we can't even think of, or it will put us down. Last session, we had a powerful session, right? A powerful message by 
Sister Betty John Korean on being a real helpmate. It was such a wonderful message. And each one of us, we want to build up relationship with our spouse. We want to improve on it. But today is a little different, you know. It's another level. It's extended family, relationship with extended family. Mm, I don't know how, many, how much of us like that, but we are living in this world for Christ. So there might be some things we need to adjust, we need to correct, we need to be careful of, and we need to practice. So let's try. Let's try together. Um, after marriage, we know that uh, you want your spouse to be your own, your very own. You don't want anybody else to poke their nose into your business. We think that we are the only one who are in this earth. We own the whole world. So we don't want anybody poking and They are all intruders. They are all uh, spoiling our fun. That, that's what we think. In India, when a marriage happens, uh, generally marriage is between two people, right? But in our culture, in our culture, it's like ma marriage is between two families. So if your spouse lives with your in-laws, you are expected to join them and live in their house. Sometimes in their house, there would be father-in-law, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, brothers, sometimes many of them, right? And their grandparents too. Wow, that is extended family. Extended family has its advantages and disadvantages. In extended family, generally children will never be left alone. There will be somebody to care to, uh, taken care of, you know, values are passed on. You will all, and you personally will have somebody to share in that family. Finance, that won't be a big stress because everybody might help you. That is might, I'm telling you again. And the disadvantages are, you can't do whatever you wish to do. Uh, your privacy, it is limited. There is more burden, more work to be done, and lots of adjustments and sacrifices. So definitely we will think, how on earth am I going to live there? If God has placed you there. God in his sovereign will knows where each and everyone has to be placed, who your spouse has to be where you're going to live, what you're going to do. He knows in his sovereign will, he has placed you there. And so God will give you all the grace that is needed if you ask him. Ask, seek, knock. We know the answers for it. Bible clearly tells us so. Today, today media has a big influence on what we think about this extended family. So staying with in-laws, you know, it's like they tell um, in-laws, my goodness, they are like devils, you know, without those two horns. Uh, they, they will make you work. They'll treat you as a slave. They will do this. It is the nastiest thing in your life if you have your in-laws. So that is how you are taught even before you're married, the conversations, uh, it might not be of um, people in your house, your mother or father, it needn't be, but others who come, others who talk to you and the things you read, books you read, everywhere it is pictured like that, it is painted like that. So that is the picture that we have in our mind. There will not be any freedom, you know, you are not going to be treated well, etc., etc. In extended families, value systems are passed on. If it is a good one, very good, isn't it? Our children will inherit it just like that. But if it is bad, we have to be careful about it. Let me um, share with you some something that I saw in the extended family I was. Okay. Uh, my father-in-law, there were 10 siblings. Okay, my father, they had 11. There were 11 of them. So you know what a big, big family it is. Yeah. Okay. Since my father-in-law was the head of the clan, uh, this house was sort of like 
a family house to all of them. They would come, they would visit, they would stay. We, uh, we, we'll have get-togethers, things like that. Okay. Uh, when my great-grandma, grandma-in-law, okay, uh, when she was sick, they took turns, came and stayed with us. Uh, they are generally very, very good people. I mean, uh, I should say that. Uh, very easy to adjust. They will come and help us if we are in need. Very good people. But what really challenged me was the sight. You know, all 10 of them, if they get a little time, very little time, they would run to their rooms. So I used to wonder. I thought it was, ah. Uh, it is just to take rest. But you know what I saw? If possible, they would be on their knees or on their bed, praying, praying, and praying. Little time, very little time, they would do that. They are all very old, yet they find pleasure. You know what? In learning memory verses at this age. And they share with each other when they uh, phone each other. I'm very bad at telephoning. They telephone me sometimes to get, to get the news. I'm really bad at that. Listen, that was a challenge in my life. I have never seen people do that. What do we do? We flip through the mobile if you get little time, right? Little time. All those little times. We want to flip, 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 and then see the latest, buy the latest, and do the latest dish. That's where we find our joy. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, let them be, let, that, that is, let each one of us be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind he can accept. Don't copy the custom of this world, but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then he will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. That is what God wants us to do. There is one in-law relationship. We all know that, which is mentioned in the Bible. Without even asking, everybody will say, Ruth and Naomi, right? Yeah, very true. The more we read of it, the more we think, how can that be? It is so unbelievable. Did it really happen? It is true. And God wants us to make that an example. Naomi gave her love, her children, her boys, most of all, her God to her daughter-in-laws. That is the highlight, right? Naomi gave the living God to those daughter-in-laws who didn't know about God. Not just with her mouth, but in all her deeds, in all her practice, she showed it to them. Both the daughter-in-laws didn't want to leave her and go. Oh, look at the bond between them. Even after their husband died, Naomi herself is telling, please go back, go back. And they don't want to leave her like that. What a bond. Great, isn't it? The departure was heartbreaking for both of them in our situation. If we were in their, in their place, we would have said, my husband is dead. Mama, I can't do anything. We'll put up a big face and we'll tell Mama. What can I do? I'm so sorry. I don't want to leave you. But then, you know, I'm, I'm going back to my, my own parents. They'll take care of me. I know I'll be a burden to you. Oh, we'll make, we'll, there are so many stories behind it, right? And we'll, we'll make up all those things and we tell. But then these two daughter-in-laws, they were really heartbroken to leave her. To all the mother-in-laws, including me, who are listening, can we be like this mother-in-law, showing God and his love to our daughter-in-laws? Can we remember that our daughter-in-law has left everything? Okay, in today's uh, version, I should say, 
they left their bed, they left their uh, uh, sleeping time, they left their communication, they left their uh, parents, everything, whatever they like, they've left and they come to stay with you because of her love for her spouse, for her dear one. She's left everything. Are we, are we helping a cope up with life? Or are we putting on demands? Mm, you better do this, you better do that. Is that our way of welcoming her? She's a newcomer to our house. She doesn't know any rules, any, any rooms. Uh, what should the communication be? What should the dressing be? How, how, how do you people treat the um, guest? She doesn't know anything, right? So be supportive and make her feel at home. I know an aunt in Canada. Um, she should be in her late 70s. And she shared one thing with me. You know, she said, I just uh, don't want to sell off my house here in Kerala. So everybody thought, oh, wow, what she's saying? She's in Canada. She's not going to come back and stay in that house. But she said, every corner, every room, every alamara, everything there, my mother-in-law took me around and she made me feel that I'm the owner. I am hers. I belong to this place. I belong to this house. I don't want to sell it off. Okay, now at present it is sold off. But then uh, she says, everything reminded me of the smile, the tender care and kindness. What a way to express the love. We mother-in-laws, I think, should feel free to communicate with our daughter-in-laws. You know? When they come, they don't know what to do. So, so if we can help them and tell them what is expected, what she should do, and things like that, and make her part and parcel of this house. Don't make her feel um, you know, alone, aloof, but make her feel as if she's she is the queen of this house. We were waiting for her. We love her. We care for her. Mother laws, please don't, you know, make rules or make uh, make uh, expect her to do things the way you did. Each person is unique. They have their own ways of doing things. And with cooking, we say use this utensil. Keep it back here. Do like this. Do like that. Today's girls, they just take their phone, they, they go to YouTube, they find out a new dish, and they do it, you know. They cook it, and they present it in style. And they think we are old-fashioned. We are spending so much time in the kitchen. Look at me, like, it's so easy. Just do this, and that's enough. But we are following the traditional way, and we want her to follow those things. Give her opportunities. Let her get engaged and let her, uh, and you please encourage her talents, her likes, and you will really be surprised. Slowly, slowly give the baton to her. Don't hold on, don't cling on to the things of this earth. Pass it on, let her take it over and let her have it in her own style. I heard um, a mother-in-law talk about her daughter-in-law. What does she know? What, what was she doing all this while? She's so many years old. Why, why, why didn't her mother teach her? I thought she, she knew all these things. She can't even make a thing according to my taste. See, that is what is underlined, according to my taste. Are we complaining? Are we murmuring? Please remember that she has just finished her studies. She was working. She was in the hostel. Please give her time. She will adjust with you. It's like, you know, uh, two streams flowing, you know, it, it, it just two different streams flowing. And then there is a place where they gather, where, where that becomes one. And the, the water flows out in sideways. There is so much of froth because of the dirt collected. There is so much because of the pressure. And then it flows on, you know, very smoothly it can flow on. 
So if we mother-in-laws help them to adjust to our homes and encourage their likes, their talents, we can flow together as long as God helps us to live on this earth. Please give her freedom to make her own choice. We see that Naomi did that. Naomi is asking Orpha and Ruth. She's not telling her, hey, you, you, you also come to Bethlehem with me. I'll see what can be done. No, you have your choice. Please give them their choice. And also one more thing. Please allow them to spend time with their spouse. Generally, you know what happens? When it is time for them to come back from work, Mother said, oh, he's going to come. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. Come on, do this, do this. You have to finish that and then go and receive him. See, no. Please allow them to have time together. And then there are some uh, in-laws who says, uh, like uh, when husbands give them specials, okay, um, I should say, uh, uh, okay, uh, for their birthday or things like that, they all agree. But uh, for uh, otherwise, when husbands give their wives gifts, like not gifts, maybe um, okay, gifts or special things to eat and things like that, um, when they are um, pregnant, there are mother-in-law who says, "When I was pregnant with your ch with your husband, I didn't get anything special. Um, uh, I had so many children." Oh, the, there was nothing special given to me. Now, why are you making a big fuss? I know it's all just shows. You're, you're not really um, going through all those cravings or things like that. It's just show making up so that you get more attention. There are still mother-in-laws who tell like that. One lady, uh, she was crying when she uh, shared this with me. She said, uh, my husband couldn't give me anything in public. So what he used to do is after work, he would come back with something what she liked and he will uh, hang that plastic cover on a tree or a plant somewhere, you know. And then in the night when everybody has slept, maybe at, in the night at two o'clock or something, they would go out in the pretense of, there was a toilet outside. So in the pretense of going to toilet, they would go out, get the snack and have it in the night. Should we be like that? Why should we interfere? It is their life. Let them show the love. Moms, modern laws. Can we be a Naomi who would cater to the spiritual, physical, and mental needs of our daughter-in-law? They are ours. They are precious. They will be the only ones left, you know, to look after you when you are need. Now you have energy. Now you have health. Now you are running around. It's fine. But days are coming when we are going to be weak, really weak. Show them Christ. Grow together in love. Talk good about them. Pray for them and pray with them. Each day, God will show you the path and the words and wisdom, how to talk to them, guide them, and help them. Please cling on to the goodness in them and throw away the hurts. Sometimes we are like cows, you know, who chew the gut. We, we bring back all the hurt feelings again and again back. And we think over it. We ponder over it. And we find more reasons to, to quarrel with them or to hate them or, or to dislike them. That is giving way to devil. We are bought with the blood of Christ. God is our helper. If God be for us, who can be against us? Ephesians 4.30 says, don't cause the Holy Spirit sorrow by the way we live. How I portray my life in the extended family will be an example and an influence to children, next generation, or else. I will not be able to ask my children, why did you do that? How could you do that? I cannot, because they will point all fingers, I think they'll point all the five, not, not just, you know, one or four. They're going to point everything on me and ask, Amma, what did you do? I saw what you were doing. A Taylor family, they lost their child 
when they were just when she was just 13 years old in a skiing accident the doctors transplanted her heart into another person's body and when when the doctors saw it was successful they called this taylor family and said look look you can hear the heartbeat you can hear it come on uh, and they was they were because they were so upset the doctor wanted to console them and they eagerly listened to their child's heartbeat in another person jesus too is waiting to hear his heartbeat in you god sent jesus for you for me so that we will beat and he he took away our sins and gave his fullness I and mean, his goodness and he filled our hearts with his goodness and he is waiting to see how i am reacting in this particular place what words i'm speaking how well my attributes how am i uh following his qualities am i attributing his qualities in the place where i'm i'm placed there are lots of opportunities in our family to wear christ please let us have the attitude of christ let us wear christ and let us live there i would say that we are a missionary we talked about mother uh, uh mother being a missionary but today i want to say that mother in law daughter in law we are missionaries in the house where we are okay and now to daughter in law i want to tell you something when i was uh, when i became a daughter in law my prayer was my god i'm a daughter in law and i don't know what to do here i'm a, i have to play different roles i am a wife to my husband i'm a daughter in law to my mother daughter in law to my father and then my sister my uh, sisters that's uh, sister laws were there and then their husbands were there so please help me every day i used to pray that help me do what you want me to do here we love our husbands we are ready to forgo anything and do anything in this world just for him but this in law especially mother in law any of us hate the sight of her when doctor lot told me the moment i see her the tingling effect starts right from my toe to the head i just don't want to see her i want to shut her off from my life i don't want to see her at all i told you media has placed a big rule doctor law snatching away uh, their child from mother in law things like that but let me tell you we are not following the media but we are following god his words are clear we are asked to honor and respect them yeah we are obliged to do so by god's grace we should have the right attitude you know our in laws they have taken care pain and they've trained the boy you love your husband to be what he is today it's all because of the uh, pain they underwent so please understand that not only you have left everything and come to this house but they too have taken big adjustment they see before it was only a husband wife and their children now a new person have come there's so much of adjustments when you have joined them if she is a godly person let her be the influence or else you have to be the influence for her showing her god's love pray with her yes we used to do that you know my mother in law was a teacher and she even after her retirement she insisted that the work had to be finished early in the morning and then after that we would get some time after everybody goes we would sit and pray it's not that we never had any difference of opinions please don't think like that 
we had our ego clashes, we had a difference of opinions, we had uh, um, little arguments about small, small things. Things were there, difference of opinion was there, but you know, praying together helped us ease our tension. It softened us and we were ready to ask forgiveness. And we, we every day we would do that at the uh, foot of the cross. We were ready to let go of the difficult situations. Uh, my mother-in-law, like she was a teacher in a missionary school and she wanted me to be a missionary teacher. But in the beginning, I was a, I finished my dietetics from Velo CMC. And I thought, I'm being a teacher. No way. Um, my ego didn't let me do that, you know. But then she didn't cumble, cumble me. That was her wish. Every day we used to pray about it. We submitted that matter in God's hand. But my ego wouldn't let me agree to all those things. Okay, uh, God convicted me that I had to do it and I agreed to do so. Uh, it was really difficult because the medium of ins instruction was in the vernacular language and not English. So it was really difficult. But then with God's grace, I was going on. That is when we heard of my mom's, um, my mother-in-law's uh, cancer was dictated at that time. And I was sorry, diagnosed was, uh, it was diagnosed at that time. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't go forward. I wanted to stop all these things. It was so hard on me, cooking, studying, project works, looking after children, husbands, in-laws, guests were pouring from all parts of the world. Mommy had taught three generations and so they all would come and I stood helpless. But my only hope was in the Lord. I would cry out to him, literally I would cry out to him for guidance, for counsel, for strength to handle all this. I remember for my teaching practice, the load was very high. We could hardly sleep. We had to make things. And then they wouldn't let me go come in the afternoons to look after my mom or serve her or anything. So uh, what I did was I would make a big can of juice for the visitors. And all the glasses, I put that in a tray and I go. People would come, have it because there's a slight, uh, no, it, our house is slightly on top of a mountain. They had to climb it. So they would be tired they, and they would wash the glasses and keep it ready for the next set of visitors. I don't think I lived or walked in my own strength. I couldn't walk. Forget about doing anything. Jesus was carrying me on his shoulders all those times. And that is why I survived. I realized how much he loved me and how much I owe my debt to him. I saw my mother-in-law sharing gospel to many and many. In her deathbed, she was doing it. And many accepted the Lord. After she went to be with the Lord, it was our turn to look after my mother-in-law's mother-in-law. <laughs> okay, that is my father-in-law's mother. She lived up to 103. Things were not easy. Don't think things were easy. Uh, the way she thinks, the way we think, it's completely different. How many generations, right? Okay, just for an example. She used to go walking all the way to Patanan, the nearest town, three and a half kilometers from our house. And she would come back carrying all the load. Walking. Father-in-law, he went by us. And then the next generation, they had their bikes, scooter, things like that. And after that, and the, and the next generation, they would decide which vehicle they wanted to go. So that is like, I'm just telling you about one thought, you know. There were, uh, at that time, um, uh, um, student, uh, uh, EGF, that is um, Evangelical Union, student leaders would come to our house to stay over. And there were girls, they were, they were in their training period. 
so they would come they, they just uh, after their hectic day they would come back and they wanted to just take rest that is when my great grandma in law would go to them and say how dare you lie down at this time you are supposed to be in the kitchen you are supposed to help china and what are you doing now um, so we would have to go slowly and pull her back or you know was uh, uh, soften her or um, uh, and we will have to tell sorry to those girls i still remember a doctor who came here she was in her back backsliding stage and she was sitting on the front uh, and phoning that time um, the mobile phone just uh, came into you know uh, this thing and so um, uh, my grandma didn't know about all these things and she went into what are you doing here what are you doing with that little thing in your ear keep that away and you come go join so you are supposed to make food things like that we were trying to console her and bring her back and tell her uh, the uh, how great our lord is but then here she was yet you know even at that maybe at that time we feel this is really bad oh she has spoiled the whole thing but then they all went back seeing how of uh, three or four generations can live together happily and harmoniously see i was just her grand daughter in law there were many suggestions out okay. there so i was just her grand daughter in law i could have easily not taken up the responsibility there were suggestions that we could put her in her home and um, um and a red uh, red cross nurse to be with her but then we all decided no i think uh, uh, we should take her of her so we brought her and and because of that we could share so many experiences the uh, the way she lived her life so much of stress strain because there were so many people in our house in that small little house how many i don't i can count but uh, okay is it clear now yes yes okay thank you okay god kept pouring grace upon grace upon grace every day in my life and he kept telling me i have placed you there in my sovereign will i know what you are going through and what you have to go through i want to i want you to be an example a living testimony in that area and it proved to be so maybe it, it was not very easy but then there were many in laws brought their daughter laws and we had a talk on how we were adjusting as a family with her i'm not taking pride I, i'm not i don't have i'm just humbling myself because god used this humble humble home and the way we looked after it was a testimony to many it was an opportunity to uplift our savior we could testify that to many people who came here for advice after she went to be with the lord my father in law developed parkinsons he uh, he lost his voice his mobility was affected god gave us a new responsibility now my husband was very busy traveling preaching the word of god and so we had more responsibilities on us you know and um but we didn't take it as a burden children and myself we enjoyed looking after there were times when he when we had to go to church for funerals things like that and he would say please can you take me so we would call an auto and put him in that auto and the thing is that because he has got mobility problem he somehow we will lift him and put him on uh, on the seat but that like it will be near that door i mean where we can enter so no way we can enter it so we'll have to climb in through the other side of the auto it was fun we took it as fun you know uh, but uh, things were not as easy because his mobility was really really becoming difficult i had to go to school i was working children were growing up um husband had um uh, husband had uh, like he needed help with making object lessons we all did the, all those things together all these things 
I just don't know how things happened. But today, all what we can say is, it is only with God's grace, only with God's grace, things moved on. Uh, and then the uh, last days, in the last days, he had to be hospitalized very often. But what encouraged us was whenever he could, with no voice or very feeble voice, we could hear him pray. No complaints, but asking God to help each one of us adjust. Here am I. That old man, in his weakness, he took time to pray. But what are we doing? Are we groaning? Are we complaining? Are we murmuring for little, little things? As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, all I can say is, but whatever I am now is all because God poured out such kindness and grace upon me. All these were possible by pleading to God to let the spirit of God work within me so that we can grow more and more into his likeness. And now I'm privileged to be a mother-in-law. But as I was talking, I was talking about the prayer about the daughter-in-law, uh, uh, I felt that I have been prayed like that about being a mother-in-law. I'm looking forward to the adventures we, can, we both can have. But I'm really sorry, Lord, that I've not prayed like that. I think I should start praying. And for daughter-in-laws, like I would like to tell you that we must learn to take, uh, to, to let the little things go. There are so many things happening in our house. And if we start murmuring and if we, if we don't, Put on Christ's love and see that. You know, we'll think that they are interfering in my business. They are taking away my husband's time. We are supposed to be together. What are they doing? We will only be, we will only be filled with ill feelings. As the song went, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Today, that's what we were listening to. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We are supposed to be one with our husband. Anything that happens outside is secondary. You together, you are one, you are one. You are the inner circle and all the others are in the outer circle. And they are looking in, the outer circle is always looking into the inner circle. But if you are one, you can go ahead together in any situation that is happening. Don't make a fuss about what is happening, all the small things. Uh, don't make a big fuss over it. After all, when you think back, see, all these things will go. Uh, it is like um, uh, the good things are going to come and all this will pass away. And when we know that all these are momentary and we are looking to that which is going to stay with us all throughout eternal we want eternal things to happen right we are going to the eternal home also sometimes we feel that our mother-in-law they are coming into my into my room without knocking and they have got lots of suggestions don't get irritated just listen to them patiently politely but accept only that is needed it is you and your husband or your family that makes a decision. You are a unit. You are making the decision with God's help. You can listen to them. Let them tell. It is their right. Let them tell. But don't take that. Don't take it into heart or don't take things personal. That is what makes the relationship very hard. Be available to them. Be of help to others, to those in need. It is a great a uh, means of testifying God, you know, then um, we might think our mother-in-law is blaming us for what we have not even thought of. Is she talking behind you? Is she showing favoritism? Do you think she's making you do all the work and she's relaxing? Is she interrupting while raising your kids? Is she not allowing you to spend time with your husband? 
The thought of all this makes us angry. Our blood boils. But instead, can we cast all this burden on him who cares for you? Remember, your reward in heaven is increasing. Matthew 5, 11 and 12 says, when you are reviled and persecuted and lied about because you are my follower, wonderful. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a tremendous reward awaits you up in heaven. And we are doing all this as if we are doing it for Christ so that we can bring forth the fruit of the spirit. I used to go astray and then he used to use his rod and stuff and bring me back. He to pull me back. No, 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 no going away. No talking back, no memory. That is not what I called you for. I have a purpose in your life. It is an everyday affair to be filled with the spirit, his love, understanding. Some of us, we are still in the UKG level. And some might be in the degree level. Some might be in a PhD. And they would have finished or they are doing their PhD level. But whatever level we are in, remember, we have to give ourselves completely to God. And let his goodness be filled in me daily. Another problem is with sister-in-law. Sister-in-law uh, sister thinks that uh, the new girl has come and taken away my brother from me. And the daughter-in-law thinks that, oh, the sister-in-law, she's such a heck of a person. What, like, every time she is interrupting, she wants my brother's and my husband's attention. This, there are fights going on. Some are very bossy. Some are very fussy. But can we accept that the fact that our brother has found an inseparable love, help him to love her more. And, but there are husbands who ignore their sisters completely because they found their true love. Don't do that. We can pray for him, his well-being. Keep showing opportunities to your sister-in-law that you love her by making her feel at home. Being there to share anything, even what your mother-in-law is doing. By, like, you know, if we have somebody to share with at home, that's what I meant. Uh, sometimes you are heard the way your mother-in-law talked. But if you are close with your sister-in-law, you can at least tell, oh, I felt hurt at that time. That is not how it should have been. Okay, things like that you can share with your sister-in-law if you are close. Otherwise, you can't, I know. Sister-in-law, please buy a small, small gift for her special days. Make her feel at home. Make her be your best friend. Make her wanted at home. Make her think that, oh, I'm so special here. Co-sisters are there at home. There's uh, sometimes there might be argument, there might be competition, unforgiving spirit. Instead, I request you to show love, encouragement, and let the words you share inspire others. Daughter in laws, please express your love to your mother in laws. Mother in laws do have love in their heart, but they don't express it. Let's remember special dates. And if you're creative, do something for them, especially write something for them. You know what, what it means to have them with you. Women are the binding factors at home. So please, let's take the initiative to love each other and not to slander or talk ill about others. And a word to bride's parents. No one is asking you to reduce your love for your daughter. Instead, what you can do is multiply it and give it to your son and their in-laws and their family. When your daughter shares a problem in her in-laws house, counsel her and guide her. And please don't take it personal. No, we actually don't know the context of that particular misunderstanding. So we, and we are hearing only one side of the, uh, uh, one side view, right? So daughter-in-law and mother-in-law after that issue, they will become one. But Dr. Law's mother, keep it in their heart. Next issue come, Dr. Law shares it, and then it adds on. And one day this bomb will blast. And that will make the situations 
uh, bad. It will be hatred that fills our mind and not love for one another. So, uh, and one more thing to all in-laws, whether your mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, any in-law I'm saying, um, God has united husband and wife together. And you should not play a part in separating them. Judgment will be on us also. We are there to help them unite, to give them love so that they can remain one as God is united there. Let everyone see the unselfish, how unselfish you are and that you're considerate in all you do. His peace, this is in Philippians 4, 5. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are Christ ambassadors in that house. We are Christ missionaries in that house. And all these things, what we heard is possible only if the self, I can be broken. You know, this I has to be broken. It, and who, and, uh, who can break it? It is only Christ who can make us selfless. Yeah. And uh, can I say one more thing? See, oh, oh, in Corinthians, it says that these troubles and suffering of us are after all quite small and won't last very long. And this short time of distress will result in God's richest blessing upon you know, us forever and ever. The troubles will soon be over, but the joys to come will last forever. And one more thing, there is there might be broken relationships. Uh, some of you who are listening might have broken mother-in-law or daughter-in-law relationship. There is uh, an art in uh, Japan, it says kintsuki. Broken vessels are joined together with, with a special gum and golden powder. And when they are joined together, it is made more beautiful than before because of this golden uh, powder and uh, you know, the art behind it. If there is anybody who's having a broken relationship, it can be joined with God's love. He is the one who helps us forgive and forget. He is there for us. He is all loving, all powerful. And one more word about my family. Um, God help me uh, be what I am, you know, uh, all by his grace. And my father was the one who helped me the most. He showed it to me in his practical life, how to love and care for others. And he asked me to do that in the house where I am going. So it's my earnest prayer that there will be a big transformation from mother-in-law to mother-in-law and daughter-in-law to daughter-in-laws. Okay, so let our world be filled with mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sheena George Koshi for the very inspiring, encouraging and challenging talk, especially the fact that you spoke a lot from your own experience will definitely challenge and inspire all of us. Now, we will have a question and answer session soon after the next tip for the day. So please post your questions, which are specifically related to the topic. Please post your questions directly to me in the chat or to the host. Now over to Mrs. Betty John Kurian for the tip for the day. Good afternoon and welcome again to the tip of the day. Our time is a little bit moving fast ahead, so we'll have a quick tip. Here's just a quick tip to make softer idlis and doshas in your home because now it is the cold, it's getting cold in various places and doesn't come out so well. So what you can do is when the temperature is low and the fermenting is slow and your idli or dosha is hard, does not come out well, you, what you can do for them is take some baking soda. It is a great help in softening fermenting, uh, fermented food. Take a quarter spoon of baking soda, mix it into one or two tablespoons of water, add it to the batter that you have. That will do for one liter of batter. 
and then you will have softer idlis, softer doshas. Enjoy well. Hope this will be profitable for you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will move on to the Q and A question and answer time. We've already received a few questions. So the first one is, how much or how less should in-laws be involved in the decisions with regard to a family? How much or how less should the in-laws be involved in the, in the decisions with regard to a family? To the level of giving advice and directions. The, uh, you, they can discuss about the merits and demerits, but the final decision has to be made by husband and wife. So it's only to that level. Yes. Okay. <laughs> when staying with in-laws, where to draw the line respectfully? I think a part of it is in the first question, but yeah, yeah you can add something to it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we are staying in a house and not a, uh, sorry, in a home and not a house. Okay, so uh, all the boundaries I would say should be drawn by Christ's love. Yeah? And it, but it depends from family to family, person to person. There are, um, each thing is different. But I would say that the moment you get married, it doesn't mean your relationship with your uh, parents is, uh, you can't end it there. It's only the emotional, there has to be an emotional leaving from your parents. They, you have to respect and honor them. Um, and also their needs have to be met. Don't neglect it, cater to their needs. It is the responsibility of children to do that. But we can't let them uh, interfere in all, all areas of our life, especially decision-making. I would again say that bond strongly with your spouse. Remember your one and communicate. Uh, we should uh, communicate also. See, many problems come because we are not communicating, especially when I'm telling you, like, how can a boundary be? Um, that's what you're drawn, right? Um, so we think that they are uh, either uh, interrupting in our, uh, in all our areas, or there are times when we feel that they are neglecting us. Um, so I, I don't want to love them anymore, things like that. But communication helps to us uh, to a great deal. That is soon after the problem has arised, if you can communicate with them, the, you can clear the problem. Uh, I have heard a story like this, um, that story, okay? She was a foreigner and she came home. And then every time she gets inside the kitchen, she would close the door. So mother-in-law was really mad at her because every time she enters the kitchen, the door is closed. So she thought she didn't want uh, her mother-in-law to enter. So many years passed, finally, she got so angry and she asked, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And she replied, see, in Germany, we used to do like that. To keep the heat, we had to close the door. And so that is the practice I followed. What happened? I, did I hurt you? I didn't know you were hurt. You could have told me that before. So because of the cultural difference, things like that can happen. So if there is anything, please communicate in a soft way. Remember? We are God's ambassadors and we are missionaries. And so we have to keep our testimony and go ahead. The next one, how to deal with in-laws who are still too involved and overly clingy to their child post-marriage? Okay. Yeah. Um, I told you like uh, uh, we wives want husbands to be our own. We don't want any interference that is there. But sometimes we have to place ourselves in their shoes also. He, this boy might be the only one whom mother-in-law can come and tell something uh, or tell her needs. So she might keep, keep interrupting. So we have to understand her. I'm not saying let her 
uh, come and rule over your life. I'm not saying that, but uh, let us uh, discuss things. And there should be, if there is a healthy relationship between daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, this can be uh, discussed, talked, and, uh, and it can be brought to a, you know, a negotiation. Each family is a separate unit. And so we have to make her understand that also, that she can't keep interrupting her, her, uh, her son was hers. But now there is somebody whom uh, he has found or uh, he is inseparable with. All those things very slowly, very patiently through our life, through our actions, through our love, we can show her. If the situation is really bad, then maybe uh, the uh, counseling or something like that has to be taken care of. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, can you say something about the role of in-laws or grandparents in the upbringing of grandchildren? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, we have experienced it. And so I'm telling you, grandparents are full of love and care for their grandchildren. I think they express it more towards their grandchildren more than to their children. The bond is really strong. They have wide experience and they have a lot of patience with these grandchildren. And grandchildren tend to learn a lot from them because the way they are treated, the way um, they are taken care of, all these things, grandchildren also have a liking towards their uh, grandparents and they learn a lot, sit with them, I think in, in our Christian homes, it is uh, from our grandparents that they learn how to pray about God's words. I'm not saying parents are not playing any role, but they have more free time. And so they tend to be with them and talk to them about Christian values, what they have gone through, missionaries who have visited them. Uh, perhaps as parents, we might not have firsthand experience on all those things. They can pass it on, pass on the good values. It said, right, in uh, about uh, Eunice and about Lopez, how it was passed on. Paul specially mentions about that uh, uh, role of grandmother, uh, mother. So it is very, very important. And if you can, as much as possible, let grandchildren and grandparents interact with each other. They would love that company and they'll have fond memories to cherish. Yes, that's beautiful. Okay. Another one, um, my in-laws will talk with me in one way when my husband is there. And if he is not there, they will be, they will talk in another way. What should I do? I have been tolerating this mm -hmm. from so many years. Please give suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tolerating, tolerating and tolerating. Praying, praying, and praying is the only answer. I would say that we are Christian uh, Christians living with, uh, they might be true Christians, or they might be just nominal Christians, or they might be people who claim to be Christians. But if you are a true believer, isn't this what happened to Jesus Christ also? Weren't people talking bad about him, ill about him? What did he come here for? To do good, to heal others, to help others. To, and he was talking good about others, but he was being uh, spoken, what? Ill of, right? So Jesus is our example. What, he, what did he do? He forgave them. How many times? Seven times seven, 77, no? No, it says seven raised to 77. Yeah, if, I don't know what number it is. Uh, all mathematics people can, you know, those who are good at it can calculate me. If we can forgive her that many times and keep showing her love and showing her and and um, showing her that you also know what she's talking about when you are with your when when uh, she is not around. Let her know that. But in your attitude, we are asked to have that of Christ. We are asked to wear Christ, where? In the midst of trials and temptations. In our mouth, we just want to tell her all that comes in our mouth. But, he, but what, what did Jesus Christ do? He kept his mouth shut. Yes, 
many times we will have to keep our mouth shut. That will uh, decrease the amount of fights that will go on. Yeah. According to the world, why should you suffer? Why don't you answer back? Why don't you prove to her that she is talking something here and something there, and in front of me she acts like a good, good lady? Why don't you show it to her? Even in our heart, we'll think, many times we'll think like that. But Christ is our example. We will have to keep our mouth shut as we read before. This is a small trial. And the joy that you're going to enjoy later, it's so hard. Staying with your in-law, it's a short time. But after that too, God will give you a life. Don't worry. Another question. There is discrimination between daughter-in-laws and grandkids. That is, parents have a stricter, higher expectation with one and is lenient towards the other. How do you handle it? Favoritism always brings trouble. We, we see that with uh, Esau, Jacob, the way Rebecca handled it, the way Isaac handled it. We, we, we know that. It's there in the Bible. That is why it is recorded in the Bible that favoritism causes trouble. But all you can do is cast your troubles, put it on him. Just throw it on him. Ask him to give you guidance. And, uh, and if possible, uh, tell, like, if you can share it in a good way that there is favoritism going on here. There is a difference of policy that you are adopting to uh, daughter-in-law or your grandchildren, things like that. You allow one person to do that and you don't allow the other person to do that. It is not fair. If we can tell it in a very nice way, there, there might be misunderstandings, but help, ask God to help you through it. Go through it. And please don't keep the hurt in yourself. Keep that away. Ask God to clean that also for you. Yeah. There is a similar question, uh, if you just want to add anything else. Yeah. How should we respond if the mother-in-law shows favoritism between two daughter-in-laws based on money, status, physical appearance, etc.? So these are all physical. Worldly parents can only do like that. It is just natural. Okay, me being a teacher, I tell you, uh, if there is an intelligent student who will answer like that, you know, oh, our attention will immediately go to them. And we would want them to perform something in front of them so that we will get a better uh, praise from others. And they will say, oh, her children, uh, her child from this class did a good job because uh, that child could... Uh, Child is talented, child could do all those things. And we tend to neglect those who are not uh, that talented. That is human. That is really human. But we need God's grace to overcome that. When we are looking at it in a Christian way, we have to uplift the others. We have to uh, consider everybody equal. But that is many times it comes only in words or uh, uh, what to say, to put it into practice, it is difficult. You need God's grace. Ask God's grace. I'm telling you, I've got, I was, um, I should say uh, um, about me, like um, a child who never bothered about God, who was far away from God, but God brought me close, you know, so that his will will be fulfilled in my life. I'm telling you, my dear child, whoever it might be, even in God's sight, you are precious. You are wanted. You are very much in that home and very much in God's heart. God cares for you. God loves you. Don't be disheartened with all that is happening around you. Take courage. Take heed. Go ahead. God will not leave you alone. He's there to strengthen you. Another question. What would be the guidelines to confront, to confront difficult things without hurting our parents. If I say that from my own life, like uh, when I came here, there was so much difference. Our culture was different. 
uh, in the sense I'm, I'm not, I'm a Malayali, I'm not saying like that, but from city to village, there was a lot of things to be adjusted. And I found it very difficult. The language was difficult. The um, food habits was difficult, um, were different. Everything was different and difficult. So I had to um, say it to them, but in a very, uh, I, I asked God to give me grace so that I could handle the situation. It was not easy, it was not easy. But every day when I submitted myself to Christ, God gave me the words to speak to them. It was not just words, you know. If you just keep telling them straight on to their face that this, I find all these things difficult, it is going to hurt them. So instead of hurting them, I had to uh, present it in such a way that they won't be hurt, but they will understand what the differences are, how difficult it was. And if they could do anything to help me, let us together do it. It was really difficult, but there was a nice way of put it in front of them. I think God gave me grace. So if God can give me grace, God will surely give you grace to handle the situation. Many more questions are coming in. Uh, I'm not sure if we have the time. Anyway, uh, the next one is how to take the relationship with your mother-in-law forward when you feel that they don't respect your privacy. But at the same time, there are occasions when they restrict your boundaries within the house. Um, who is restricting? They themselves restricting their boundaries? Is it like that? Can I have? Can I hear the question? Yeah, question? Um, I think I think the mother-in-law is restricting. How to take the relationship no. with mother-in-law forward when you feel that they don't respect your privacy? And at the same time, there are occasions when they restrict your boundaries within the house. Mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship is so difficult, I know. Uh, I think and that is all throughout the world. It's not just in India and in Kerala, but everywhere. It is a difficult, but I tell you, God is the only source of answer. For each and everything, I want you to go to God. And he will guide you in your perspective, in your um, family situation. Each family is different. So if we can't, it is going to be, if I tell it from my own experience, but I'm telling you, God can help you. He is the only answer. There, um, <laughs> could you hear what yes, I said? Yes. Yes, ah, okay. uh, you, you, you may have to say it again. The last part we did not hear. Okay, see I'm saying each family is different. The situations are different. We as a family will decide how we can go forward with, with uh, see the like husband and wife decide what is their priority and how much uh, they can let their in-laws interfere in their things. If they are um, um, drawing boundaries, then we will also have to take some steps. We'll have to make them understand. But if still that is not helping them, then husband will have to take the initiative to tell them how hurt we are, how that uh, this person cannot adjust because of this. So that I think a husband will also be led into this problem to solve the situation. Yes. Uh, another question. I have a sister-in-law who is a believer but she speaks very harshly to me and don't show any kind of respect. It hurts me a lot whenever I speak with her. In spite of that, I inquire about her, but my husband insists I should speak more often to her. What should I do? It is human tendency to avoid such things. Avoid your sister-in-law, avoid your mother-in-law, and we, will be at least, we can at least have peace. We don't have to confront them. But... Jesus didn't do that. Jesus confronted with those people. He showed them love. He died for them too. Same way we have to realize that uh, um, we know that she is a Christian, but uh, God, please help her understand how God 
is working in her, how God wants her to work, how God wants us to work together so that your name will be glorified. You keep praying in that manner and that will uh, help in, in, uh, to some extent. And you, if you keep on praying, God will give you the result, but it might take some time. Don't get disheartened. Don't stop talking to her. Be with her. Show her your love as much as you can. You can win her only with the goodness in you. Evil will shut her off completely. Right. Next one. I have an in-law who is mentally ill and a child who has special needs. How can I cope up with raising my child when my in-law cannot understand my child's challenges and needs? It is a very difficult situation. We should pray for her, whoever it is. We will really, we will really try to um, pray for you. I'm telling you, we had a, a relationship like that out here in, uh, in our church. But this daughter-in-law, she managed both very well. I don't know how it was only, she says, uh, by seeing the love, this mother, mentally ill mother, children had towards her. In spite of she being mentally ill, all her children loved her very much. The love that all of them showed to her made me feel I have to love her more. So she took her in her arms. Like uh, she didn't even uh, uh, go for their wedding. So when she came after the wedding, the first thing she sees is this mentally ill mother-in-law um, looking at her. Uh, through the curtain, you know, removing the curtain. And she said she felt so bad. She never knew about it. But because she saw the love all the others were showing to her, and that encouraged her to love her. And after that, when they had a child of uh, having the same problem, it was difficult managing both. <laughs> God in his sovereignty has placed you there. I think it is in Mark. 10, I don't know, uh, he's asked, it's, it's written like this, eat what is served for you. So God has served this particular problem for you. You have to take it. If you take it in, in the good sense, or if you take it in without murmuring, without saying, thank you, Lord, you have, uh, you, you see me as a person who can handle my mother-in-law and my um, special need child. Oh, you have poured such grace upon me. And that is why I'm placed here. Thank you, Lord. Give me grace and hold both together. God will give you the grace. God will send people to help you. Make your needs known to others. Don't uh, uh, swallow all the needs and all your, uh, all your worries to yourself. Share it with others. There will be people to help you out of this. Okay, we will uh, stop with one last question. This is slightly similar to the previous one. How to handle if, I, if my mom-in-law suffers from delusions and tells wrong things about me that I never did to my children? How can I allow my kids to spend more time with them? Because I've seen some families where children believe these things and mother-children relationship have been affected. My advice might be not to let them spend much time with her because children won't understand what, um, what mother-in-law might be saying because of her illusions. But if, um, uh, if the daughter-in-law or their mother can talk good things about her mother-in-law to the children, that is when she came, she could do this. Uh, she was once upon a time, she was so talented. She, cooked food for me, she took, she took care of me, things like that. She, if she could uh, say the good things about her to their children, they will not have a mental, oh, she's bad, she's, oh, look at that, she's doing this to my mother, she talks about my mother like this, and she's wrong, she's completely. So it's not that mental detachment that is needed, but she can talk good to um, their children about their mother, uh, about mother-in-law to them, but at the same time, see that they are not being influenced by their mother-in-law. See, once influenced, it is very difficult to 
to remove that um, thought pattern from their children. We Thank have, you. Yeah, and uh, yes, yes, you know. one, one thing more. Yeah. My great grandfather-in-law was a man of prayer. And he would pray for each. I told you there were 10. And he would pray when he pray, when he sits down to pray early morning, 3 o'clock. He would pray for 10 children, not 10 children, their family, their in-laws, and all their in-laws, who all was concerned. So it was. it took a huge amount of time just for the family around them, for church, things like that. Okay. So I, I still believe that we are still in the Lord. All, uh, all the children, grandchildren, their family are still in the Lord, all because of this one person's prayer. I request all those who are hearing, you might say it's because you have such a gra great grandfather-in-law, that's why you are still doing things for the Lord. No, I'm saying, yeah, that is true. But what I want you to give you a challenge is be that person who will pray who will pray for each and every one of the family, members of the family, or like whom we are, or like especially for this lady, things like that. Pray, pray, and pray so that you will be blessed, your generation will be blessed, their generation will be blessed, and they will stay for the Lord. So I, I give you this challenge as I close. Um, be a good mother-in-law, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, and be a prayerful warrior. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so uh, encouraging. Uh, let us all uh, continue to be prayer warriors. As the song says, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you, Mrs. Sheena George Koshi, for those wonderful words. Uh, we have already crossed our time. Uh, sorry, we could not answer a couple of questions um, for the lack of time. Now, before we close, uh, let me just give you an update about the upcoming sessions. God willing, our next meeting will be on December 19th, 2021, Sunday, 3 p.m. That is next month, 19th. For all moms and dads, because we have a couple who will be speaking to us, Brother Peter and Sister Sally Peter. They are Christian counselors from Pondicherry. And they will be speaking to us on the topic, understanding gender differences. That is uh, understanding male-female differences. Brother Peter and Sister Sally Peter will be speaking to us. So we encourage all the young moms and dads, young or old, to join us. Uh, please mark your calendars, December 19, 3 p.m. For any queries, suggestions, or details, um, or for any topic suggestions, please send a WhatsApp message to this number, 944779536, Sheba Samcherian, 944779536. If you have any other comments, suggestions, you can use our email address, momfocus2020 at gmail.com. We have a YouTube channel. The name is Mom Focus. All our previous uh, sessions uh, are available on that YouTube channel. Today's session also will be uploaded in a couple of days. So please go to that channel. You can watch all the sessions uh, in the Mom Focus YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to be part of the WhatsApp group, uh, Mom Focus WhatsApp group, you can WhatsApp to this number, 9447-95836. For any counseling needs, please WhatsApp to 89783-06903. For any counseling needs, you can use this WhatsApp number, only WhatsApp available, 89783-06903. This is Sharon Rachel John's number. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining. Uh, we are indeed grateful to the Lord for every opportunity that we get to share uh, this platform uh, with you all. We are so delighted that so many of you have been following uh, this Mom Focus uh, channel on YouTube as well. Please continue to do so and the Lord has graciously blessed us. Um, now we will conclude with a word of prayer. Our most loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you gave us 
to sit in your presence and listen to your word, Father, from all the practical experiences and from uh, the different portions of scripture. Lord, we are thankful to you for giving us the insight into this topic, uh, relationship with extended family. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be faithful in the different roles that you have given us. Lord, we pray that you would give us grace to be prayer warriors, to stand on our knees and to get grace and strength for each day. Lord, we thank you for helping Sheena and T to um, uh, you know, take the session so very well and Lord, helping her to answer the questions. Lord, we know many of our dear sisters are going through various struggles. We pray that you would grant them grace and strength and help in time of need. Lord, we thank you for all your goodness and your mercies towards us and towards this mom focus ministry. We are humbled by your grace and your uh, mercies towards us. Lord, until we meet again, we pray that your presence would be with us and guide us and guard us. We commit the next session into your hands in December. We pray that we will be able to join together and be blessed. We thank you and we praise you for all your goodness towards us. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you so much for joining. We hope to see you next time. God bless you.